What's going on everyone? This is Jacob Shoup. You're watching the Tom O'Brien Show. We have a show in store for you today. Quite a good one actually. We have Basil Chapman coming on in the second segment. And then we're going to be joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle in the third and the fourth. Let's see what we got going on today. Turn that down. We have the composite right now trading about 0.88%, trading at 18,956. And if you start looking at some of these charts, the Dow's a little bit different. It's not been hit the same way as the, you know, let's say the SPY and the composite itself. But, you know, you get this gap kind of down. And this composite wants to go right back up to its highs. Um, I believe that's kind of where we're going to be heading. We're at least going to test it again uh, going upwards. That way, if the uh, Dow Jones Industrial off about 0.39%, trading at 43,000. 353 yeah, that spy up about 0.23 percent at 589 the e-mini of course trading at 5931 you have the dollar uh, kind of still cracking down a little bit lower right we touched that at 107 and wanted to come right back down uh, trading right above that 106 level uh, of course you had some buying a little bit earlier today with it uh, up 106.63 we're trading right now at 106.19 you have crude oil off about point, up about 0.3% at 69.38, so a lot of funky stuff. Uh, I'm surprised this get, didn't get hit as hard um, with you know some of the developments that are going on geopolitically, I suppose. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. And then you have gold kind of coming up a little bit as well, up about 0.76% after a few sessions really just trading very hard to the downside. Uh, trading up 0.76%. Same with copper, up about 1.08%, trading at $4.16 on that contract. You have silver up about 0.42% at $31.35. The Russell trading up 0.46% at $2,328. Well, we got Sentinel Ones doing okay today, up 3.52%. You know, some of the big news is really coming out of Microsoft, right? So they, they had their event speaking about what they're going to do. So they're touting the new AI agents. This is at Ignite 2024. Let me pull up Microsoft to see what they're trading at right now. But due to it, you're getting a lot of pull on some of these other smaller AI stocks. So you, really nothing's changed on that. But if we take a look at AI right now, so that's C3 AI. Pretty, <laughs> pretty large part of the upside there. Um, they're making a deal with Microsoft to help roll out some of these AIs. And I was curious, I'd never really taken a look at C3 AI in any capacity, um, but they're very interesting, right? So kind of what C3 AI does, and I don't know how I feel about this chart. I don't know how I feel about this company. I was looking at their fundamentals and let's see if I can pull these up right now. Okay. Yeah, so these guys essentially are rolling out uh, basically AI applications within different industries, okay? So this is what we've kind of been talking about. Once you get this AI built out, th this is what Microsoft, this is what Google wants to do. They want to rent you their AI for your business or your personal life, and you will pay them a subscription to do so. And, uh, you know, whatever that payment structure is going to be is just kind of dependent You've had some kind of slowing revenue, at least over the quarters. Year over year, this is pretty good. I think signing the deal with Microsoft is uh, gonna be fantastic for them. They expanded their deal with Google quite a bit. Uh, subscription was up kind of lower in the Q1 of, of 25. Uh, it's kind of interesting to look at. And I, I just don't, you know, with, with some of these AI companies that are kind of, you know, in this price range and market cap, you know, you, you want to see some real big ramp up. At least I want to see some real big ramp up in it. Um, one of the things that I thought was extremely interesting about them, we can, we can talk a little bit more about it. They had a revenue of 87.2 million. That is 21%. Uh, but again, just a very small uh, increase from Q4 of 24. Subscription revenue, yeah, again. I mean, it, it did well year over year, right? But I'm, I'm curious what's happening in Q4 and that didn't happen in Q125. One of the things that I found interesting about C3 is this. This is a, it has a business wire kind of deal, right, obviously, but it's, it's these patents that they got, and I'm not sure how this manifests, in it because this is the one that really kind of blows my mind here, right? So 
AI orchestrator and AI orchestrator coordinates multiple AI agents, invokes specialized machine learning models or other tools, and handles diverse data types and tasks. So really, you know, some kind of like central nervous system, right? For all of these different AIs that are going to be used, let's say at Shell or, you know, they're, they're with Nucor, Baker Hughes, U.S. Air Force, right? Kind of collating all this stuff together and, and making it operate seamlessly. It's, it's honestly pretty interesting. And I'm not sure how that's going to manifest yet, but it's making me want to watch this company and kind of see what they do with it. Because, you know, I mean, the whole, the whole point of these large language models that we've been talking about, right? is you're going to get to use every suite within a certain company and it can, you know, coordinate and kind of communicate seamlessly. If I'm reading this right, it seems like it's not just C3 AI agents, not just Microsoft, not just Google, it can be all of them and, and they can share this common language. So it, it's kind of interesting to me. Um, I had not really looked too much at the company at all uh, until I saw the news today. Uh, Microsoft is, of course, giving you <laughs> access to this on your uh, your own personal devices. And I was speaking uh, with a friend last night, and uh, she told me that she uses Copilot for a lot of different things, like in her business that she runs and everything. So I thought that was kind of fascinating. Uh, they're also working with D-Matrix to make um, kind of an augmentation chip, which is initially when I read the headline, I was like, oh, no. I mean, are you starting to see now like hyper-specialized chips you know rolling out this quickly and uh, so it, apparently it will be used to complement nvidia and again this market is really waiting um for nvidia to post earnings I, I do think they will beat and i think that their forward guidance will be good uh especially with blackwell coming out though the issue you run into with nvidia again is not really like this earnings thing but it's like let's say you know two months down the line if they can't get blackwell to stop smoking out whatever it's put next to um, then, then you see some problems, right? So we'll see what happens with that. Folks, you stay right there. We're gonna be right back with Basil Chapman uh, right after this break.